What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to be downloading images using multi-threading. So first I'm going to start off using single threading to download images and then we'll compare it with the speeds of using multi-threading. So the first thing I want to show you guys is a text file containing all of the URLs. So this was actually downloaded from ImageNet and I might make a video on how to get some of these URLs but in this video we'll just be focusing on the multi-threading portion. So this, this text file has about a thousand URLs and they, they're all URLs to images. We're not going to be downloading the entire thousand images. We'll start off with maybe 100 and then go to 200 and compare uh, single threading with uh, multi-threading. All right, so let's just get back to the code. Yeah, so this is single threading. So basically what we're going to do is uh, we have a function called download image and it's going to take the image links um, first, we're going to read the image links, and then we're going to put it into this function, and then we're going to be uh, downloading one by one. We're going to be using request.session, and then session.get to download the link. After downloading the link, we'll be saving uh, each of the images. Uh, not here, we'll be saving the images here. We'll, so os.path join with the saveder, and um, we're going to be saving the image by the, uh, their respective numbers. So. So yeah, so basically this uh, function is just going to be downloading the images one by one. All right, and we have a saved there. Uh, this is puppy one. So let's just go to puppy one. I think I have it here. Okay, here we go. Puppy one, so there's nothing here. All right, um, single thread. Okay, so image links is an empty list. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reading that text file grab all the image links, grab the first hundred actually. We're going to be grabbing the first hundred image links. We're going to read it, line equals uh, read line. And we're going to append image links with it. And then we're going to run the function, download image, and we're going to be going through the first hundred links. So I've gone through this pretty quickly, but the main point is this is just going to be downloading the images and we're going to be uh, just getting the first hundred images. So I have start equals time dot time, and then we download the images, and then end equals time dot time, and this will let us know how long this process takes. So let's just get started. I'm going to run this now. All right. All right. So, and as you can see, these HTTP connection pools. Um, I use a try and accept. If you can't connect, we just uh, skip it, and it's going pretty quickly. Twenty nine thirty. Uh, I guess I'll just wait and um, let it just uh, continue on. All right, so. Okay, so we're, we have about 70 images and it's, it's going a lot quicker than I expected. Um, and six, okay. All right, so the total time taken was 44 seconds for 100 images. All right, so I'm just going to close this and I'm going to comment that. So we just have a reference when we do multi-threading. So let's just remember this. Time taken was 44 seconds. All right. Okay, so now we're going to uh, attempt to download images using multi-threading and see if using multi-threading makes a difference in terms of speed. But before we get started with that, the first thing I want to do is let's just take a look at the images that we got. So if you take a look at the images we downloaded with the uh, single thread uh, script, um, as you can see, there are a bunch of images that are um, faulty or haven't been downloaded. And I think the uh, list of URLs that I had, the uh, text file containing all the URLs, have um, some sort of problem in the sense that a lot of those URLs are old and those websites don't exist anymore. So that's why you can see there's a bunch of faulty or uh, corrupted images or non-existing images within our 100 images. Now we're going to be downloading the first 100 images in this uh, puppy threading uh, folder. So we're going to be use this folder as our as our save directory for the multi-threading. All right, so the single threading, uh, if you go back, was about 44 seconds. So let's see. Let's see how this works with 100 images. So we're using the same amount of images for i in 100, and we're going to be using 12 threads. And I'll go over the code a little later. First, I just want to uh, run this and see how fast we can download everything. All right. So as you can see, it's much quicker. We're already up to 30. 
All right, uh, 70, 80, 90, 98, 90, Okay, so it took uh, only seven seconds. I've actually gotten this down to five seconds. So depending on, I guess, some of the connections or depending on the threads, um, you can actually get it down uh, a little bit lower. All right, so time taken seven seconds. So let's see if I increase to 15. I'm going to increase this to 15. And uh, let's just close this just in case sometimes the shell is taking up some resources. So I decided to close the Python shell. Okay, um, so we're going to run this down with 15 threads and see if it makes a difference. So I have Q join, okay. And there's a lot of options in here, set daemon thread and stuff like that, because I was playing around um, trying to figure out why it was hanging when I increased this to uh, 200 images. But let's just stick with the 100 right now. And I'll run this. Um, let's see how fast we can get it with 15 images. All right, so it looks like it's done. All right, so with 15, sorry, with 15 threads, we got it down to uh, five seconds. So you can play around with the amount of threads. Even if you only have four processors, you can use multiple threads because we're doing, what we're doing here is, um, it's not a CPU intensive task. There's a lot of actually downtime. So when one thread is actually trying to uh, download an image, um, there's a lot of downtime. You have to connect with the website, receive the information, data. So in terms like that, uh, threading is very useful when there's a lot of downtime. And I explained all this in my earlier uh, threading videos. So that's why you can use uh, maybe 15. You could even try 20 and see if that improves the speed. So uh, let's just go back and we got this down to actually five seconds. So what took 44 seconds, we were able to do five seconds um, with using multiple threads. All right. So if you increase this, I'm not going to go through a thousand images, but um, even with a thousand images, you'll see a lot of benefits. And what we can do is, let's just put this to 200. Now, if I increase this past a certain amount, um, past 100 to say 200, for some reason, it's hanging at the last few images. So it gets the 198 pretty quickly, but the last two images, it's been taking a while. And I think it just might be that the threads are getting caught in some connections. Um, I don't I don't really know the low level stuff with the requests, what exactly happens, but it could be that certain threads are unable to make connections. So they're trying, retrying, retrying, and it seems certain threads might be sort of wasting a lot of time just trying to make those connections. If I run this, you guys will understand better exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so in this case, we don't really need to set daemon. As I said earlier, I was playing around with a lot of different options, trying to see why running the 200 was actually taking a lot longer. Um, running multiple times, I actually got it down to 17 seconds, but usually if it's hanging, it takes about 64 seconds. So let's see. So let's just run this again. Okay, now with 200 images and let's see how fast it goes. So as you can see, it's really quick. Um, already 100 images, 160. So it usually hangs a few seconds around here. So it's pretty predictable, it hangs around here. So it must be some bad connections because it's, and then it'll hang around 196. Here we go, 197, 198. And here it'll hang for a little bit. So this was the problem I'm having. Um, it hangs around 198. And I'm not really sure why it's doing this. Uh, you guys could play around with some of your data and uh, actually it would be very helpful if you write some comments as to if you are having the problem with um, the data that you're trying to download. It could just be that there's a lot of URLs that are faulty and that could be the problem. All right, so it's stuck at 198 and it used at 199. So it took 67 seconds. So it should have taken about 10 seconds, but we'll close this to so 67 seconds. And what we can do is um, setting it to daemon will not help. I mean, I've tried a bunch of uh, different, uh, I tried getting rid of uh, q.join. We can actually try to get rid of, uh, we set all the daemon, we set all the threads to daemon. Actually, we could do something like this as well. Um, I don't know if this will help, but I'll run this. And let's see if it, so I get stuck here. Well, let's see, once again, 166. Around there, okay. So then I'll get what's 198. So once again, I'll get stuck here, and
Okay, so we have 200 images, but the daemon threads are blocking. All right, so let me just close that. Daemon threads, and yep, I guess we'll have to join. Use a t.join. Let's see. Let's just run this once again. So it always gets stuck around here for a bit, 166, 167. So the pattern is pretty predictable. Then it'll get stuck here, 198. And it'll take about 30 seconds. I'm not really sure exactly why. It'll take about 30 seconds to... Uh, and it took 65 seconds. So yesterday, for some reason, um, I wasn't having this pro... It wasn't taking as long. I was actually completing this in 17 seconds. And I actually, I even created a wrapper, a decorator uh, for requests, uh, that session to try to figure out if what's, it's, if it's taking a really long time with certain connections. And even trying this, I don't really understand the low level stuff with the request. So um, I found this code online and I, I attempted to use this as well. Um, I turned it into a decorator. It wasn't, um, it, I don't know, I didn't feel like it was really helping. We're going to now just go through the code. So the main thing you have to realize is you need to use Q. Well, one of the ways you can actually um, share information with threads is using Q. All right, so let's just get started. So I've imp imported operating uh, OS requests. Uh, this you don't need. This was just for this uh, decorator I was attempting. And import time. So the main things you have to import is Q. And from threading, import thread. Uh, we don't need locks in this case. But the main thing you want to, you want to import is the threading and Q. And of course requests okay so okay so the save directory is where we're saving everything image links we don't need and we don't need counts so this is actually just a code from the single thread uh, script okay uh, the first thing we need to do is fill up the queue so so I've already made threads on queues uh, Q equals Q so we initialize a queue here and what we're going to do is uh, grab the first 200 text and we're going to put it into the queue so we're filling up the queue with the 200 URLs. So we're going to read the first 200 lines of the URL and input into queue. And always use a line that strip because sometimes some of these URLs might have like extra white space or new lines and that will um, that'll create a problem. That just reminds me we should take a look at our images. So let's go to temp, uh, puppy threading. And as you can see, um, a lot of images were downloaded. We still have some faulty images and that's probably the URL, but most of the images, or at least half, were downloaded. Okay, so that's what you do. First, you uh, initialize the queue, and then you put 200 items into the queue. Uh, queue dot queue, queue size is just looking at the size of the queue. So you can actually do something like assert uh, assert queue dot queue size equals this number, whatever you use for range. Um, so it should be the same. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, so now let's go back and take a look at the function. So we're going to use image count. Uh, we're using a queue. We're going to be grabbing images one by one. We need to keep count of that. So I'm actually going to use image count, and we're going to globalize it. So by making it a global variable, we keep a tally of uh, everything the threads are doing. So it's not confined to this function. The threads will um, increase the count, and that will be a global count. So if not session, session equals re uh, request that session. This was actually... It's not needed. Um, this was actually just to use this decorator. So I was trying to create a session as none. And then um, if we're fed into a session, we don't have to run this line because the decorator was actually going to feed in a session. All right. So here's uh, the main code. While not q.empty, so while q is not empty, we want to continue getting images. So we want the threads to continue getting images. Uh, while q is not empty, we're going to try getting getting an image. So session.get and it's going to be q.get and we, this block equals false is all it's saying is we don't want the, the queue to block if it's empty. So pretty much we're not waiting for the queue to be refilled since this is a one-time thing. In this case if the queue is empty we want to be done. We don't want to block until the queue gets refilled. So essentially what this is saying is we don't want the queue to block till it gets a refill because in our case we're not refilling the queue. Sometimes you'll have threads that are filling up a queue and you want to block until the queue gets uh, refilled. In, this, in our case, we put uh, block equals false because we want the threads to uh, end. 
if there's nothing to grab, we want the threads to end. And um, so what we're going to do is session.get, we're going to be getting what are the URL that Q gets. Yeah, that's going to be grabbing the URL. And so we have a try and accept. So sometimes there's problems. Um, you, you can't connect with the URL, faulty URLs. And I was also having uh, Unicode errors, but um, these are some of the exceptions I was getting. And all you need to do is accept. You print the E and we're going to increase the image count. So even if we're unable to grab it, we want to increase the image count to let us know that it's gone through this image. And Q.task done is just letting you know, uh, letting Q know the task is done. So uh, Q, Q actually keeps a tally in the back because um, it wants to know when it's done with all the tasks. So as you can see, uh, Q.join, I was using Q.join, which is probably the best, it's actually an appropriate way to use uh, queues, you want to use queue.join to make sure queues are done. Um, and queue.join is based off of queue.task done. So these are a lot of a lot of details that you don't really need to worry too much about. But basically, uh, just to summarize what I've been saying is queue.task done lets you know that um, this queue.get has finished its job. So there's a tally going on in the back, and uh, based on the tally, q.join Q should block until the tally reaches the size of q. So in our case, q is holding 200 items. So um, each time we run q.task done, it knows that item is the task is done on that item and it will maintain a tally in the background. And once it hits 200, which is the amount of items that q is holding, q.join will uh, unblock. I know. What I mean by unblock is let us progress to the next portion of our code. So essentially, yes, yeah, so while queue.not empty, we want to um, try to get the item. Now, once we get the item, the uh, item, which is represented by R, we want to write the content. So this is exactly like the single threaded code. We're just uh, just writing the content of the of the request we made, and we're saving it to saved our and image. Um, and here we're using image count. So the threads are uh, keep the tally of image count and we use that in the title. Yeah, so that's pretty much the gist of it. So the main thing you guys should take away from this is if you want threads to sort of share our information, in our case, URLs, uh, it's always good to use queue. But yeah, so that's pretty much the gist of it. So you want to use queues uh, to share information with threads. That's a very uh, safe way to do it. So I want you guys to test this out um, on your data, whatever, if you have a bunch of URLs and see if you're running into the same problem as I am. Yesterday, I was able to get this actually to run 17 seconds. It's running 64 seconds. Yesterday, I was able to get it for uh, 17 seconds. So I'm not really sure if it's something with threads or if it's something with the, uh, the URLs that I was downloading. But um, yeah, so I'd love to hear your feedback as to if it worked for you or not. And I think that's it for this video. So that is it for this video and I'll see you guys next time.